uh, I would like to present me and Andrei Kurilin. Andrei Kurilin is currently PTL of Rally, so he is leading this project. And I was initial after of Rally and leading it for a few years. I'm Boris Pavlovich, if someone doesn't know that. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask the question. So uh, uh, do we have some already Rally users or contributors? So who is using Rally currently? OK, cool. cool. And did someone contribute something? Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, but I'll repeat for two uh, that doesn't know what is really. So, it tries to make software testing great again, and it tries really hard, and there are some really good results already. And basically, it's a together tool and framework that allows you to write simple plugins. And then using this framework in YAML format, combine these plugins together in very complicated test scenarios. So you write simple code, then you combine it in complex scenarios and get results that you need. And then Rally allows you to work with these results, generate reports, compare results, or just like you can get results from Rally, push in some other systems like you know, Elasticsearch, do other stuff that you are interested in. Uh, as well, it allows you to build health checks of different services based on the results that are more complicated than just some kind of unit tests. So this is very old picture, but it's still good, still good. So there are like few parts in Rally that are pluggable and there are components of Rally. So first of all, there is like deployment part. Uh, usually most of people are using production like or pre-production environments. So they already have environments. So they use just like existing deployments. Uh, they don't use Rally to deploy the stuff. However, it's possible. And then there is a part uh, verify framework that allows you to actually wrap your unit test based frameworks like Tempest under Rally and have a simple unified interface for all of them and store results for longer like purposes like comparing, tracking, like how it changed over the time and so on. And there is a like benchmark or task framework that is like Rally framework built in that allows you to combine these plugins together and uh, create different test scenarios. And there are like, uh, you can write exporters or just use built-in reporting mechanism that allows you to generate reports. So this is like new version of like really task uh, uh, framework. And as you see on the slide, there is a like version two here. And you can specify like such simple things like title and description so you can understand what this task was about. Uh, then uh, you have a subtasks, which are a list of tasks, subtasks that you are going to run. Each subtask, you can assume that it's like test scenario that you are willing to run. And this test scenario has like, as well, title and description and other things. And it has like this keyword called workloads. And it allows you to specify uh, different scenarios that will be run one by one or in parallel. In parallel is still in progress, but you can run serially scenarios in the same context, which allows, uh, gives you a more flexibility here. So this uh, new format is simpler than previous one, and it's more explicit, and it allows us to continue work on the framework that will allow us to run multi-scenarios or different scenarios in same context as well. There were a few more features related to that. Then you have like Rally task reports that you can generate by one command from based on any results that you have. And there are different like, uh, so it's like one uh, HTML file uh, that contains uh, like multiple uh, inside like 
pages, you can say. And it has like overview where you can see like list of the all uh, subtasks that you have run. And then you have like detailed information about what subtask was actually run, uh, its result, and different like charts and so on. And uh, after that, there is a rally verify report. So this is framework, as I said, based on the unit test framework. And Andre can tell more about this. So it is uh, our new report for verification component. It was writing from scratch. It allows uh, to generate report for several re uh, verifications results to compare it uh, to filter by uh, test status success skipped. Uh, uh, and you can generate this report for different uh, number of uh, results. It's not limited, no. Okay. Uh, so about the project itself, so it started in Havana, which is like, so it's already a few years old. And from the beginning, we have already like more than 350 contributors from like almost 80 companies, which is great. And latest user surveys show that like 25% of deployment has really, even if it is just like testing tool, not like something that produced direct value, which I think is great. <laughs> and a lot of people is uh, thinking about adding it to their deployments, which is as well great. So we have adoption. So, and I would like pass here ball to the uh, Andre. He's going like to tell more about what they did in the, this release and what are the uh, goals for the yeah. next one. Okay, so. thank you, Boris. Okay, so uh, in this release in Pike, uh, we spent time to make Rally more generic framework. It uh, includes several tasks, uh, make uh, Rally verification component more generic. Uh, originally, it was designed to a simplify launch in Tempest, but now you can write plugin for another unit-based uh, framework. For example, uh, it can be some unit test for Kubernetes, uh, for Docker or something, another system. And uh, we unified uh, our Rally task uh, framework uh, to suit uh, different uh, platforms. And uh, here is uh, a POC for Docker plugins. It contains several simple scenarios, contexts, and so on. So, uh, latest rally is suitable for launching, uh, checking whatever you want platform, whatever you want uh, application. Uh, we spent a lot of time to do it, and finally we succeeded in it. Okay. Uh, while uh, we are prepared to launch uh, for checking uh, different platforms, uh, uh, we are seeing how we can manage uh, plugins uh, and so on. So uh, we are planning to split uh, uh, Rally to several repositories. It includes uh, that uh, it is possible to easy install Rally plugins like simple Python package. Uh, it uh, allows to simplify managing requirements for these uh, plugins and so on. So oh. So basically, I mean, what is the problem is that if we put all Python clients, Docker clients, Mesos clients, other kinds of clients, there will be like huge amount of like requirements, which makes really very, very high weight tool that you don't like. And then you can just like split really core functionality, like pip install really, which will work very straightforward because it doesn't have any High heavyweight at like dependency, and then you can install like Mesos plugins or OpenStack plugins or Docker plugins or Kubernetes plugin using the same pip install command, and really sure. automatically automatically you will discover all this stuff, so you don't have configuration pain here or any kind of that. So yep. Yeah. Thank you, Boris. Uh, also, we make a great improvements in uh, cleanup. Uh, previously, Rally cleanup was Awesome, but uh, it is not. It uh, wasn't ideal. It uh, tried to clean up all resources in uh, specific tenants, uh, and uh, it is not uh, suitable for production clouds uh, in case of uh, real tenants, real users. And now Rally filters only those resources which were created by specific task. So even one task uh, of Rally will not uh, remove resources for another uh, task of Rally. So you can use Rally for with existing users and uh, 
the interface, it, it will remove your VMs and so on. So it was uh, about PyCrelease and here's a uh, plan for Queens. Uh, we plan to focus on uh, making Rally more user-friendly for operators. Uh, it includes cleanup improvements. Uh, uh, again, we make a great progress in previous release, but uh, we need to implement more features, such as uh, disaster cleanup. So if for some reasons uh, Rally failed, uh, someone killed the Rally process and so on, uh, we need a way to remove all resources which left in your cloud. And uh, we have all mechanisms for it and just need to implement simple uh, command to do it. Also, it includes uh, postponing cleanup, so we will be able to launch some specific task, then an analyze uh, resources, why they failed or something like that, and then we will be able to remove it and your cloud will be clean enough. Uh, and since we are trying to make Rally unified for all platforms, we need to uh, extend uh, cleanup mechanisms to support different platforms, to support uh, different resources uh, for all these platforms. And we are planning to okay. work for Elastic and Boris will talk about Yeah, so uh, for the last year I started like working more in DevOps role and operational and as well, I tried to use Rally on some production environments. So, and I, I started understanding that, that DevOps approach is a bit different from developers' approach, and what works well for developers doesn't work always for DevOps. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, we are going to fix some mistakes that we did in Rally. So, one of them is that okay, everybody is storing some time series storage or elastic this kind of data in production or pre-production, I mean DevOps, so they will bring Elasticsearch, put data there, put some Kibana or Grafana on top, or they already have everything they would like, just few metrics extra. So, and there will be like huge effort here trying to make a backend for Rally that stores data to Elasticsearch instead of SQL and data will be stored in such a way that you can aggregate it in custom way that you actually need or put some alerts on top and so on. So the all things that DevOps guys are doing, so make it simple, strive forward out of the box without any hacks on top. So yeah, so this is going to be like great effort and if we like succeed and see that uh, SQL backend is not that popular, anymore then maybe we will like have two modes of rally so same framework but in one case we are like one time run give me report or like quick tests and another is like more like rally as a service where you just run rally and it stores data to Elasticsearch, so you have API that you can query from other systems or you can use directly data from Elasticsearch and like push them to other places that you need. So, okay, next slide. Uh, multi scenario slot. So, uh, as Maurice presented, uh, task framework uh, version two, uh, it includes um, subtask, and uh, now it is possible to launch workloads one to one serially. But uh, we want to make it more perfect and uh, uh, enable launching these workloads in parallel. So it will uh, be more similar to real load, to some chaos, <laughs> something like that. And uh, as uh, I mentioned previously, we made Rally more unified, and uh, now we need to implement uh, plugins for other platforms. It is already possible, but we need to work on uh, this plugins. plugins yeah. <laughs> Basically. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> so we okay, need your help. Okay, so first of all, we need some help, like uh, someone should hire Andre <laughs> because like he's ending his work at Mirantis. Uh, yeah, so, but he's a cool guy. You can get my reference if you need. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, as well, like as any open source project, we really uh, need support from community. So like making reviews, uh, fixing some bugs, doing some commits, 
making new plugins in at least like sharing feedback so if you're like facing some problems or you are required to do a lot of hacks and customization on top of Rally to run it. So just share that and we'll try to fix it and make it like simpler for usage. So like sharing feedback is very important part here and it's not that hard. Like you can just send email to like mailing list or point someone specific. So that will work as well. Okay. So there are some links here, so if you like get presentations, so you can hear uh, where is the source code, documentation, bar tracker, other things that may be very useful for you. So, and basically we are moving to the part of like, so I'll keep this slide for a while, okay. So, good, so questions. Does anybody have some questions? Sure. Uh, regarding uh, the future improvements on uh, different platforms, uh, can you go a bit detail into that? I mean, so let's say I'm testing, I'm using Tempest part of Rally. On my can you Office. present yourself first? I mean, just Sorry, I, I'm a QA at Oracle uh, oh, cool, OpenStack. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I use Tempest, uh, Rally, uh, Tempest part of Rally to mm -hmm. do some testing. Uh, but let's say uh, the Cola Kubernetes, we move on to Cola Kubernetes. And I want to do some testing. Where, so, what, what part? How does that? So it's not tempest related. Okay. The, would so you like to answer? Okay. Uh, originally, verification component was designed to simplify launching uh, tempest, and we have a lot of code for this task. And then we realized that uh, a lot of things related to verification component doesn't relate to tempest at all. So we made uh, verification component more pluggable. You can. Uh, write uh, a plugin how to launch a specific tool, mm -hmm. and then uh, all reporting mechanism, saving database, comparison will work for it. Oh, okay, I can add here a bit sure. more. So basically, every company is taking some kind of unit test framework sure. and putting their integration test inside it. And we saw that there are many companies that they have some own like Tempest-like frameworks and they have like bunch of tools this and they have like then on in Jenkins some job and other things sure. that are trying to glue all the stuff. And instead of doing that, you can like make a plugin in Rally, which will just trigger your job to set up, clean up, and run tests. And it will store results for you and allow to do reporting and all, all other stuff that are the common for all kinds of unit tests. So that's, that was the thing. Yeah, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, cool. Any other questions? No. Okay, sure. Can you go to the microphone, please? QA engineer at Miyokura. Um, there was some plan to integrate Shaker also on, on Rally. I don't know what, I have been a little bit out l lately. Uh, is this still true or what's the situation of? Uh, I think if, uh, we have enough resources in uh, the next uh, release, uh, we will work on this task because uh, Shaker is a good tool and uh, data plain testing is uh, very important, it's high desired uh, feature. So yeah, we want to include it in Rally, integrate with it. So we did some changes in framework itself. So like scenarios can return cast custom data that is aggregated after. And this thing is required to basically do data plane testing because it is going to generate extra data. Like for example, if you are doing some pings or sending traffic, then you have bandwidth, latency, and other parameters that you would like to put up. And as well, we had these things in reports, but we are still not there with the plugin that is uh, doing the shaker, shaker work. So that's still work in progress. Okay, any other questions? No? <laughs> okay, I hope that's good. <laughs> uh, so thank you for attention. Thank you. A nice day, some summit. <laughs> bye bye. bye.